Okay guys, if you want to get good at logic, the secret is to work through loads and loads of examples. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through some worked examples of proof trees for propositional logic. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago, I'm a philosophy professor in the UK. In this video, I'm going to be working through two examples of proof trees for propositional logic. First one's going to be a fairly simple one, and then we're going to look at one that goes into a little bit more detail. So I've explained all the ideas and rules behind proof trees in a previous video. That should be linking up here somewhere if I've done it right. So I'm not going to go through too much of that in this video. So if you're not familiar with this stuff, I really suggest you watch that video first and then come back to this one and work through these ideas with me. Okay, if that sounds good to you guys, you can do me a favor, give this video a big old thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon to get notifications. Okay, so first up, we're going to work through this example. Okay, so can we get from a conjunction with negated conjuncts to the corresponding negated disjunction? So this is one of the De Morgan laws. So yeah, we know that we can prove this, but still we want to find the proof. This is a pretty simple one to do, basically just checking that you've got the idea of proof trees. Okay, so why don't you pause the video at this point, spend a few minutes working through this example, and then we'll get back together and let's see if our answers agree. So first line, we're going to write down the premise, and then it's the negated conclusion. Okay, so we're always negating that conclusion, so make sure that we've got two negations there. Then we just start applying the rules and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tick them off when I've done them. Okay, now this one's going to come out pretty simple because here we've got a conjunction. The rule for that gives me not P and not Q all on the same branch. So I've done that one. Here we've got a double negation. So the rule for that just eliminates the double negation. So we get P or Q again on the very same branch. So I can tick that one off. And then I've got this disjunction here. So that is a branching rule. We branch left and right, P on the left, Q on the right. I can tick that one off. And then what have we got? Well, on the left, we've got P and not P. So that branch closes. And on the right, I've got Q and not Q. So that one closes. Okay, two branches on this tree. There's one branch, there's another branch, but they both close. So that is a closed tree. That is a proof from here to here. So the premise does prove the conclusion. That was a super simple example. OK, let's look at our second example. OK, we're going to try to prove this single sentence. It looks pretty horrible. What on earth is going on there? OK, so the first thing to do is identify the main connective. It's this one here. It's an implication. So we're basically saying that this side implies this side. That's very similar to saying that there's an entailment from this to this, or that we could prove this from this. That is essentially what we're going to be doing here. So let's look at each of those sides in turn. This side, the left, is saying if P, then, if Q, then R. OK, what's that saying? It's a little bit like saying, well, if you've got P and you've got Q, then you've got R. So as premises, give me P and then give me Q. I'm going to get to R from it. OK, classically speaking, those things are the same. So that's over here on the left. What have we got on the right? Again, it's an if then. And the if bit is itself an if, if P then Q. And the bit on the right, the then bit, is also an if then. It's if P then R. OK, so how would we read this horrible thing? If, if P then Q, then, if P then R. Mm. Here's maybe a slightly better way of reading it, reading these ones as implies, okay? So if P implies Q, then P implies R. Okay, why would this follow from this? Well, this bit is kind of saying, start with P. If you can get to Q from there, then you can get to R from there. Okay, why would that be? Kind of under what situation would that be the case? Well, given P, if you can also get Q, then you can get to R. That's how you would tie those things up. 
This thing is called the distribution axiom, okay? Because it's telling you that the arrow distributes over itself. We don't really need to worry about that right now. We don't really need to worry about why it works the way it does. We're just going to think about how we prove it using a tree proof. The nice thing about proving this one is there's only two real rules that we need to think about. The rule for if then, the arrow, and the negated rule for the arrow. Plus, we're going to use the rule for closing branches to get this thing as a proof, as a closed tree. OK, it's a little bit more complicated, but it's not as bad as it looks. OK, so again, why don't you pause the video at this point, give yourself a good few minutes to work through this. And when you're done, get going on the video again. I'll work through it and we'll see if we agree. OK, how did you get on with that? So I'm going to start working through this one. So there's the thing we're trying to prove. It's just a single sentence. So that's basically our conclusion. There's no premises. So we're going to begin by negating the whole thing. Make sure we put these brackets around the whole thing. So it's the whole sentence that gets negated, not just the first part of it. OK, then we need to see what's our main connectives. Which rule do we apply? Well, it's negation. And the next main connective is if then. So we want the rule for not arrow. So we add this bit and not this bit as separate lines. So we get P arrow Q arrow R. And we get not, put the whole thing in brackets, if P then Q then if P then R. Let's tick that one off to say that we're done. At this point, we could work on this one or we could work on this one. I'm going to suggest in general, it's always best to avoid branching if you can. This would be a branching rule. This is a non-branching rule. So let's work with this one first. It will make our tree a bit neater. OK, so again, we've got the not arrow rule. So we want to have this and not this. So we're going to have P arrow Q and not P arrow R. Uh, let's take that one off to say we're done. Same deal again. So now we've got this one, this one and this one. We could work with any of them. But again, that's a branching rule. That's a branching rule. That's a non-branching rule. So let's stick with the non-branching rules first. So we're going to add P not R. OK, let's just give ourselves a little bit more room with this and we can take that one off to say we're done. OK, now we've only got branching rules left, so we're going to have to either do this or this. It doesn't really make any difference. We're going to get good stuff either way. OK, so let's just start with this one at the top. We're going to branch and we're going to get not P on the left and we're going to get Q arrow R on the right. Nice thing about this is here we've got not P, here we've got P, so this one closes. So although we branched there, we immediately close the left hand branch. So we're basically back to having one open branch and the tree hasn't really got any bigger or harder to use. OK, so we can take that one off and we've still got two sentences that we need to work with. Again, it doesn't really matter which one we pick. So let's just again go with the one at the top. So we get not P on the left and we get Q on the right. OK, so again, here we've got not P, there we've got P. So this one closes. We're going to need a little bit more room here. We'll take that one off to say we're done. The one we've got remaining is this one here. Same deal. We're going to get not Q on the left and we're going to get R on the right. So here we've got not Q and Q. So that branch closes. And here we've got R and previously we had not R. So that one closes. Let's just squidge that down so we can see the whole tree. Yep, there we go. OK, so we've got a closed tree. All the branches close. So even though that was a really nasty looking sentence to begin with, it didn't actually give us a really nasty huge tree. One thing I think it's really interesting to think about here is basically we were doing quite a bit of what is essentially modus ponens. OK, so we've got lots of arrows. Even though they're negated arrows, they're kind of arrows in the original sentence. So if we were doing natural deduction, we would be doing lots of modus ponens or lots of arrow introduction, conditional proof. We're kind of doing that here. But rather than doing modus ponens, so going from if P then Q, P therefore Q, what we get is, let's just look at this one, right? P arrow Q, uh, we dealt with that here. We branch with not P on the left and Q on the right. But because we've got 
P already, like we would have if we were doing modus ponens. The not P branch closes immediately. So we start off with one branch. We temporarily branch left and right, but immediately the left hand branch closes, okay? Because we've got P, if P then Q, we branch to not P, that closes straight away. So we end up with just one branch developing from that ori original branch and it's got Q on it, okay? So if we start with if P then Q and P, we end up with an open branch with Q on it, just like if we were doing modus ponens in natural deduction. Okay, guys, so there you have a few worked examples of proof trees for propositional logic. I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions or queries, leave me a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching this far. I will see you guys soon.